when I first got there, the idea of a prefect at Engel was, was holding the rest down. <laughs> it wasn't lifting them up. Do, do, do you understand what I'm saying? Um, yeah, no, yeah, no that, I think that's very true. Um, well, I think the, to begin with, the rules were, were, were quite specific in terms of what was or was not accepted or yeah, would be tolerated. And um, and the prefects were, were obviously the first line of of defense or control or whatever. Um, but but I, I didn't think the rule um, broke out or um, yeah, I thought there were a good set of rules. Uh, that every but how thick was the rule? How thick was the rule book? Uh, how, how, no, when you went there, the rule book was a little pocket-sized thing. Um, I think with a green cover, um, which could go in your red, top red cover about. Correct. Wasn't the red cover the was red, red cover the rank? No, no, it was. It was I, I have a copy somewhere. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly where, well, but I think it's about. <laughs> just, it was about twenty pages, and the beginning of term, there would be a rule test. And if you didn't pass the rule test, you were automatically no rank, um, and, and and you had to to you know, study and and take the test. And, um, so everybody had to know or probably knew what rules, and and therefore, um, you yeah, know, there was no kind of ignorance of, of, of a rule that was then subsequently enforced. And, uh, and I thought the rule book, I mean, I can't imagine that there weren't changes or amendments to the rule book, but quite frankly, um, I, I honestly don't recall any changes over the four years that I was there. Well, well, by the time I had left, the rule book was, was a A4 clip folder full. <laughs> now, you wouldn't believe it. Um, we had a policy file which was massive. And Housemaster's policy file was just massive, and um, the the rule book was, as I say, it was a clip folder. Um, so, it, um, it, does that mean like uh, two hundred pages thick? Yes. Now, wow. just two two simple examples. You remember the flat roof on in front of, uh, on the library in Belfast? <laughs> yeah. Right. JC never wrote a, a, a rule saying you don't go on the flat roof. He just he just said you you um, you should you should be sensible and use use your common sense and not do things as stupid. <laughs> okay? Right. And, exactly. Right. You're right. Now th that was the spirit of the law. And if a if a house master or a member of staff or a prefect saw a student on the roof and said, look, you shouldn't be on the roof. It's not a very clever thing to do. You could fall off that yourself. They get off there and don't go on there again. That was the end of the matter. The kid got off the roof and that was it. By the time they'd written into the rule book, you are not to go on the roof of Bel uh, Belvedere uh, Library, the kids were saying, well, why not? It's a great place to sunbathe. Or, you know, they were arguing with members of staff. And the reason for it was that the spirit of the law was lost. Or the idea that we adhere to the spirit of the law, that started to get lost. And members of staff were, were, were not prepared to, um, as they saw it, lose popularity by enforcing the rules. Or enforcing their own, their own understanding of the rules. I mean, there were a number of times when the dress code was being broken and I'd pass somebody wearing something they shouldn't be wearing and I'd say to them, hey, uh, you know, very sorry, but will you go back to your house and change me? Because that's not really um, what you should be wearing. Oh, it doesn't say so in the rules. And I'd say, well, I'm very sorry. It's, it's the way I see it. It's not how I like it. Now go and change. Now, 99.5% of them, off they went and changed. One or two went and complained to their house parents. House parents would come to me and say, why have oh. you said that? And I said, well, it's... You know, it, I expect you to, to support me. The school rules say this, and that's what they should be wearing. And so, um, yeah, but slowly you get to a point where that is eroded. And at the house class, the only thing you can do is to ensure that it happens into people in your own house so that they keep the rules. And if the people on the other, as you say, as in Delaware, were getting away with blue murder, um, there's, there's very little that you can do about it. Um, it did, things did go literally blow 
blow up when Skurlock blew his hand up. Were you there then? No, you weren't. Um, no, there, was no, no, no. Called, there was a guy called Skurlock down in Delaware who mapped around a lot with the um, uh, Will and what was his other name? Um, O'Neill twins. O'Neill's brothers. And oh, yeah. They decided no, John, John O'Neill and Bill O'Neill. And they, uh, different they, O'Neill brothers, though. They, they, they decided that they were going to create a gun. <laughs> and they sawed the end of a um, ski pole and packed it with um, homemade gunpowder, <laughs> um, stuck, stuck a ball bearing in it, and pointed it across the road and lit the fuse and it exploded. But it, it you know how, well, maybe you don't, but um, ski poles are basically a piece of, piece of metal um, made into a tube by um, putting it into a press and then soldering along a joint. Well, the joint, the joint exploded into, it opened up and it exploded into Skullock's hand. Oh. And that was when, and that was when JC and um, group Captain Watts started asking what the devil was going on down in Delaware. And realised that there was a lot more going on down there than they actually, they actually understood. But now, um, you know, the, the, the way in which J.C. dealt with that was, again, very, very quietly. But I know that he got hold of Bertie and said, Bertie, this just won't do. I can't have students blowing themselves up in, in one of my houses. <laughs> oh, <right>. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can understand, it's a bit difficult to explain to parents that it's coming home with a hand, what minus a hand. Um, but, um, it, yeah, it was... It was very interesting times in those early days. Um, I mean, it was, it was, it was to a certain extent a question of the, the, the staff having the, um, the same uh, power and determination to see things done properly as JC had. You know, um, and if the if the staff were prepared to, to to keep the rules, then certainly the rules had to be written down, so that you could actually point to the rule in the book. In, in the, in the yeah. Rules. See, the, the rule book, which um, <clears throat> yeah, it, it's quite quite interesting. Obviously, a, a very slim <laughs> volume compared to what it what it was evolved into. But I mean, it really stayed with a lot of core. Kind of guide to conduct and and some uh, yes yeah, so, uh, uh, some very general kind of conduct standards and then some very uh, specific um, yeah uh, that that uh, were included. So this is a uh, interesting piece of uh, of uh, uh, regulations, if you can call it that. Um, yeah. and, and I suspect over a period of time, obviously, was in need of. Uh, yeah, revision and updating. Although, as I say, the four years that I was there, I don't recall that there were any official, yeah, you know, changes to the rule book. There were just additional um, kind of, I don't know, the things that you could and couldn't do based on, you know, physical changes in the school building. Um, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, we had the big landslide in back of Alpena. I think there were a few new kind of, you know, expectations or rules, uh, but, but they were very much ad hoc uh, rather than considered part of the official rule book. Um, what, one of the things that, that this um, prompts is a question that I've, I've uh, kind of thought about over many, many years, different administrations and so forth, is in, in your opinion, is there in fact an optimum size for the school? Because I think when I was there, there were about 160 odd students. They're now up to, I think, 380, maybe 360. But, you know, at uh, what uh, point does the approach, which was, you know, very hands on staff, being very involved and so forth, uh, at what point does that, um, you yeah, know, become jeopardized by the overall size? Or does it? I would have said about 250. Sort of the level in 1975 or so. Yeah, yeah. The, the junior school has had 
added a large number of people to it because the junior school became um, twice or three times the size it was over the um, when I when I was in Belvedere, the whole of the junior boys were in Belvedere, um, and all the junior girls were in Exeter. And then it got to the point where the school needed more recruits to come in from um, their own uh, sources, if you like, and so. To the obvious thing to do was to increase the size of the junior school. And so the junior school became, or um, Adacha became the junior school, and it slowly evolved into what it is now. I wasn't aware of that, Will. What percentage? Uh, that, that, I had 20, I had 20, I had 65 beds in Belvedere, and 20, um, or 20 boys were juniors. And the girls were about the same size. So the junior school, as as a percentage of the total enrollment, as as in your estimation, would have grown quite quite significantly as a proportion of the enrollment. Yes, it was getting on for a quarter of the school. Because what I find in, 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 in intriguing and somewhat frustrating is that over the many, many years uh, that have passed, the, the, the wisdom or, or the theory at least was that uh, tuition revenue basically um, covered expenses, give or take. And, and so it was always a very delicate balance of filling beds. And yet, you, uh, uh, and yet I would have thought over a period of time when you go from, say, 160 to 250, um, that you would somehow be able to get ahead of, of that delicate budget balance where uh, you, you wouldn't be constantly uh, struggling to fill beds uh, as, as the size of the school escalated. And so based on that theory which was presented, I said, oh, well, that makes sense to expand the size of the school. And yet now, I believe the school's at a point where it's still tentatively at a break-even of around 340 students, with some suggestion that maybe the school would increase in size up to the 400-plus range. Uh, so why would one choose to do that if uh, all you're doing is basically scaling the size of, 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 the, uh, of the equation without having any benefit? Uh, borrowing money and putting up new buildings and expanding and so forth um, for the sake of expanding. I mean, the, I don't see any real benefit to, to the students or, or the uh, or the school itself. Well, I, you're seeing from my hymn sheet, basically, because my feeling is the school shouldn't be much more than about 250 or 300 students. If they want to expand it, start another school somewhere. Mm -hmm. Because if you... What, what was so powerful about Aglon, and I used to have arguments with Teddy Sen and Philip Parsons about this, was that the, the, the students that went there got a lot of individual attention. Most, most, most classes were about uh, 18 to 20 students, and it was very rare that they were more than that. The moment that you took in another 20 students and increased the size of school, you've got to take on another member of staff, if not two members of staff. In order to keep your program going, um, the choices in the program, and also the class sizes down. First of all, we didn't have classrooms big enough to take much more than 20 students. And secondly, that's what a lot of parents were paying three times as much for their children to go to Aiklon as they would if they'd paid to go to an ordinary school in England. And one of the things that JC was very clever about was that JC was was talking about, always talking about developing the whole man and the, the, the close relationships and the um, building of an individual's confidence so that they did pass their exam. Um, and despite all the different attractions of Aegon that were going on outside the academic sphere, um, he knew that one of the most important things was at the end of the at the end of the year, the students came away with their exams 